section, this quantitative reasoning section is known as the number pad calculator section. By this I mean that you do not need to use your mouse. Now this will come with practice but it's important that within this section you are using keyboard shortcuts, you are using the on-screen calculator that you're able to summon by Control c and that you're able to navigate through all the questions simply using the keyboard shortcut. Now you may say, well that doesn't seem to be too hard. What is also a requirement in this section is that you're able to use the number pad of the keyboard, just the number pad. There's nothing else that you need to use. By this I mean you're able to perform calculations like 17 times 19 on the keyboard without even having to look at the keyboard. This will save you much time. If you have to type using the numbers at the top of the keyboard, you will fail this section. By failing, I'm referring to getting a score within the 600s. It's imperative that you're able to score at least 750 inside this quantitative reading section. Now what I would advise in order to build up speed and precision using the calculator is to be able to replicate a large number simply by using the number pad and you're able to time yourself progressively. For example, if there's a 54 digit number and you have to copy every number within that 54 digit number on a Word document, for example, and by doing so, you have 15 seconds at first. Maybe you're able to finish it within 14 seconds. Now you time yourself two days later where you're able to finish that 54 digit number within 11 seconds and you try to cut down as much as you can. By doing this, you're allowing yourself to speed up and to save the time for questions that potentially you may not have answered. Now if you have a younger sibling and they still have my maths, if you know what beat the clock is, one, you're a legend, two, it will build up that speed that you need to be able to answer questions in the real exam. Now this is really, really important and I would simply advise you to try it out. Try it out on the Medify portal. Try it out by simply using the keyboard. Try to minimally use the mouse at first and try to cut down on it bit by bit and which by closer to the exam, you're not even using the mouse in this section. Now I would advise for this section of the exam that you do not use written resources to help you. 1, 250 UK CAT questions book. Now, don't get me wrong, the book was beneficial, but the questions there were really hard. Like, I was saying there are probably five markers inside a GCSE paper. They were difficult. Now, when I took the exam, I was sort of expecting the same caliber of questions to turn up. However, it didn't. So what you should do is get used to the application, whether that be on Medify, um, in the initial stages, and on the official UK CAT website on the later stages. Because you'll realize within the exam that you will hardly have any time to pick up the permanent marker and the whiteboard. So back to the point of trying to simulate the environment, it's imperative that you simply just use a on-screen calculator, no physical calculator. Now, just to clarify, that's my unprofessional personal opinion on the 1,250 UK CAT questions book. I'm not a professional. I'm not here to defame the book. I'm just here to say that I personally did not enjoy it. And I so basically, don't sue me. I'm not here to open up a dispute or anything like that. I promise you. Like, I'm just not up for that. Now tip number three is to simply read the question before you read the context. Many of the cases it may ask you for a very simple question. A question that could probably take you around three to four seconds to answer. And you'll realize this when answering questions that many a times a very easy question is injected potentially to give you hope but, but more so just to sort of prepare you for the questions that can come up. And by you reading the question, you'll be able to decide roughly how long it will take you to answer the question and whether it's preferable to move on to a question type that you're more familiar with and that you're able to get those marks easily. Tip number four. Now, just like verbal reasoning, this section has very easy questions at the beginning usually, and they would have very hard questions injected into the middle and very easy questions at the end. So what I would advise is that you do not get bogged down in the middle of the section. Now, many people will say, I simply didn't have time to finish all the questions in the quantitative reasoning section. Now, this is probably the section that I would say you are probably most able to answer all the questions with the certainty that you got it right. So trust me on this, simply approach the questions that have minimal text first. Now, what I advise you is that as soon as the QR section kicks in, that you quickly skip to a question that you see has minimal information. You answer those questions because there are no no tricks, there are no impediments to conceptually understanding what the question is. Now I would advise that any question that mentions going on holiday with three to four stops 
in between at different countries with different time zones and it tells you to calculate the time of arrival, skip that question. Honestly, just skip that question. Many people find those sort of question types difficult and even if they were to get it right, they will spend a considerable amount of time and those questions are only for those who have finished all the other questions because there will be a lot of easy questions within the QR section. And I would estimate that achieving a score of 730 to 780 can be achieved by leaving out six hard questions. But as long as you're able to answer all the other questions. Now scoring a score of 780 you'd be able to compensate majorly for another section. Now that's why I'm trying to encourage you to spend a lot of time on the QR section. Now when practicing the QR section I would simply go and try to attempt ratio questions whether that be from recipe questions, baking questions and recipes probably baking. Now those sort of examples usually come up year and year so if you really want to bang this exam those are the questions that you spend your most amount of time on and trying to answer them as fast as possible. I'll probably emphasize this too much so let's get on to the next section of the course. However trust me on this one that is imperative that you try your hardest on the QR section. If you're able to score over 800 in the QR section and you're able to score over 800 on the AR section, which is the aim of this course, you'll be able to get an average score of over 700 if even if you got below 600 on the BR section, but scored 650 on the decision making section. So trust the strategy, trust the plan, believe that I know what I'm doing. Now the last tip that I'm giving is units. You need to ensure that you check units before you start any calculation, any operation, any, I don't know, mutation, that you check units. Once you have checked the units, understood the units, only then get onto the calculation. And hopefully that basically sums up the good tips that I have accumulated for QR. If that helps you, that helps you. Leave a thumbs up if that's helped you. And I'll see you on to the next video. If you have very minimal time, I have an ebook that is present in the link description. And that's my killer, killer, killer tips. Essentially, I explained them in the video, but there are some tips in there that I haven't really explained. Basically, catch you guys on the other side. Why is it all?